What's going on, smart people? Are you way too far ahead in your high school physics classes? Well, have I got the books for you. Today, I thought I'd share a little bit about the textbooks I'm using for my first semester of graduate physics. Now, let's be real. I'm only going into my third week of grad school, so I don't have this extensive knowledge of how all of the books are laid out. But what I can do is offer my first impressions of the book and just go over what they cover, what the book entails. Now, the three courses that I'm taking this semester are math methods, quantum mechanics, and classical mechanics. So I'm going to be going over those three textbooks that are associated with those classes. Let's go ahead and kick things off with quantum mechanics. Now the book that I'm using is Principles of Quantum Mechanics by Shankar, and so far it seems pretty similar to Griffith's. It seems a bit more thorough, which I guess you would expect from a graduate physics textbook, and it includes more material. But the first chapter is basically just a math review, but it's about 70 pages, over 70 pages of math review, which is really nice. So it makes sure that you're squared away on your linear algebra and the idea of vector spaces, because because that's so important in, in quantum mechanics. And after that, going into the second chapter is a complete review of classical mechanics. Well, maybe not necessarily complete, but it goes over Lagrangians and Hamiltonians, and it does that for two reasons. The first of which is Hamiltonians are super useful in quantum mechanics because the Schrodinger equation is written in terms of it. And when it comes to Lagrangians, well, this book also has two chapters dedicated to the path integral formulation, Feynman path integrals, which is where Lagrangians become important again. So, so far, I like that this book seems really Really thorough. I like that it walks you through the steps, and I also really like that it starts right off the bat with Brockett notation, Dirac notation, which Griffiths sort of danced around. He would write a whole bunch of psi star psi's instead of having like Brock. Brockett notation is just, it's so, it's so simple. That's a small part of this book, but it's still something that I enjoy. This book just really seems to go from the ground up. Like, it starts with math that's important, so everyone's on the same page. Then it goes into classical mechanics, which everyone should really know. And then it goes to where classical mechanics starts to fail. Then it goes to quantum mechanics in one dimension. It talks about the double slit, probability, uncertainty. Then to the Schrodinger equation. It, it just, it just seems like it's a, a good flow. It then gets into more complicated and involved aspects of quantum mechanics like spin, the hydrogen atom, approximate methods. And I hope we get to this next thing next semester. We're definitely not going to do it this semester, but there's also a section on the Dirac equation, so it gets into relativistic quantum mechanics. So the material looks fun. The attention to detail that Shankar seems to have in the book I can really appreciate, and I hope it, I hope it carries through with the rest of the chapters. Uh, I'm going to leave a link in the description so that you can see the PDF version of this book, and let's get started with the next class, which is Mathematical Methods for Physics. I hope I don't spoil this for anybody, but there's a lot of math in physics. And not only that, but there's a lot of branches of math in physics. And when you're looking for a mathematical physics textbook, I'm not looking for one that tries to condense all of those different branches of math into a 500 page textbook. So this book that I'm using now doesn't have 500 pages, it's not 600 pages, it's not 700 pages, it's 1300 pages of math. I am of course talking about Mathematical Methods for Physics and Engineering by Riley, Hobson, and Benz. This is probably one of my favorite books that I own, simply because it serves as such a good handbook and reference book for math that you already know. I don't really use this as a textbook to learn new math, and believe me, there's plenty of math that I've never even used before in this book, uh, but it is a good reference book. If I need to learn something, I'll find a textbook on that branch of math, but one of my favorite things about it is that it's written by physicists, for physicists, so there's no theta phi confusion. It's all written in the way that you'd be learning it or applying it in your physics classes. Now, though I don't really typically use this as a textbook for learning new math, you definitely can, and it doesn't really skip many steps or anything like that in developing like the theory of certain theorems, so, so that's good, and that's nothing that you really need to worry about. It's, it's pretty thorough still. Some of the, what I view as important topics that this book goes over is your single and multivariable calculus, differential equations, vectors, complex variables, partial differential equations, integral transforms, group theory, tensors, I might have already said that, I just think tensors are pretty cool. Also goes over statistics, probability, and even numerical methods. Overall, I think it is a great book for math that you are fuzzy on, and also, I will leave a link in the description so that you can see the PDF version of this book for free. Now, last but not least is Classical Mechanics, which I've been using the Goldstein book for, and unfortunately, I don't have my physical copy of the book yet. Amazon has been very slow at delivering that to me, so I've been going online and using a PDF version until now. Uh, so, spoiler alert, towards the end of this section, I'm also going to give you the link to that textbook as well. Out of the three textbooks, this is the one that really feels like a graduate physics textbook. I mean, chapter one is Lagrangians. When I took undergraduate classical mechanics, it took... 
probably two thirds of the semester until we got to Lagrangian mechanics. So this is it's very formally presented, but having said that, there's a lot of text explaining what's going on. Now, I'm not a fan of using online textbooks. I like to have something in my hand. And though this, this book is more formal and it covers a few more topics like general relativity, um, I've been getting along fine just using the Taylor book that I used for undergrad right now because right now we're just going over basic Lagrangian and Hamiltonian mechanics. We're not too far into the class yet, so I can get away with using an undergraduate text, just like I could probably get away with using Griffiths for quantum right now. Like It's, it's just it's neither here nor there. This book goes over kind of what you would expect it to and that it goes over things like Lagrangian and Hamiltonian formalism, rigid body motion, the inertia tensor, the central force problem, but then it gets into more sophisticated things like special and general relativity, continuum mechanics, perturbation theory even, canonical transformation. It covers a lot of bases. I think at some point it even goes over field theory. Actually, I just checked it goes over relativistic field theory. I'll probably give a more thorough review of these textbooks towards the end of the semester once I've really gone through them, but be sure to check out the links so that you can go through the textbooks for yourself and let me know in the comments section your opinion on them, and I'll see you guys there.